Power BI Report Builder offers you out-of-the-box connectors to a lot of different uh, databases. So if you come here to Data tab, you'll see that you have uh, ways to connect to the Power Platform. But if you want to do so, you need to you know, log in into your Power BI environment. Uh, we're not going to do that in this video. Uh, there are uh, out-of-the-box box Azure connectors, database connectors, so probably this is what you're going to be using the most. Uh, it offers you a way to manually end data. So this is pretty useful if you want to keep uh, a, a, a reference table, for example, that is a stat static table uh, in Power BI itself. So you can do that from here. Uh, you can create a new data source from scratch. And we're going to try this here. And also, after you create a data source, you can create a data set. So for you to understand the, you know, the hierarchy here, first you need to create a data source. So connecting to a SQL Server or Oracle database or MySQL uh, database, for example. And then uh, using that data source, you're going to say, OK, I want to get that data here into my Power, Power BI report builder to serve as an as a input data for your tables, for your, you know, your charts and things like that. So for example, if you click here on SQL Server, you see that you have this data source properties that it's uh, the connection type is SQL Server. So if you click here in build, so you can then build the connection to the data uh, to the SQL Server uh, data source. If you click here on Oracle, uh, you see that it's pretty much the same screen, but the Oracle database it's uh, the one selected here. Um, and if you click on new data source, it's going to be exactly the same screen. But now the connection type you have uh, several options, and those options are essentially this list over here, okay? So another way to create a source is by right-clicking here in the report data uh, menu. So you right-click on it, and you can add a new Power BI connection or a new data source. So you see that is exactly the same screen. So let's call it uh, APS orders, and we're going to build the connection. So I have SQL Server in this machine, so we're going to connect to our local host. Of course, you can have your Windows authentication, the current user that I'm use, logging in in this Windows. It, it does have uh, access to the, to the database, to this instance of SQL Server, but you could also uh, use a SQL Server authentication and use a password. And uh, if you do have a connection uh, uh, permission to this database, now you're going to be able to just select one database from this instance of SQL Server. Okay, so if you test connection here, it should succeed. Uh, there is a way to attach a data, this database file, but to be honest, uh, I never use this. I see very, very little usage of this functionality here. But if you know something useful using uh, this over here, uh, let me know. Click here in Advanced depending on how your uh, remote uh, uh, server is located, depending on some security uh, policies deployed in your environment, maybe you need to do some manipulation in here. But 95% of the time, just doing this, uh, it's going to be error. Okay? So there you go. So you just created your first data source. Uh, Another thing that you can do in Power BI, of course, it's creating multiple data sources. And then you can connect data from those multiple data sources, similar to what you can do in Power BI Desktop, for example. So let's create a new data source here. Call it uh, Enter Data. So you see how this is done. Uh, essentially here, there's nothing else, right? So this data source essentially is telling you that you're going to select the data manually, OK? And then uh, that's done. So let me rename this to um, uh, static table, for example. Okay. So now that I have my data source, I can create a data set. So let's right click here, add new data set. Let's call it uh, ORS. And uh, here you are able to select to what data set you're going to be consuming the data from. So let's select APS orders. And now you can create uh, your query, right? So you can have a view, you can have a start procedure. So if you 
Click on this, you can select the start procedure to run, right? Uh, or you can just write your query here, or you can use the query uh, designer. Personally, I don't recommend using the query designer. I really recommend you to learn SQL, to learn writing your own SQL uh, uh, statements. It's very, very useful for any type of uh, data analysis, data science, uh, science, or any any type of technology work, right? But you could do you could do that from from here as well. Let's write here a very simple query, I'm selecting order number. Operation number, operation name, uh, let's see, resource from orders where data set ID equals 50. So, I, of course, I know the database, uh, but if you do not know, you can open your management studio, create your query, and just paste it here. Okay? Right. So let me just click OK here and you see that it just uh, understands the output of the query and shows you the fields here, right? Well, let's come here back to the data set. And now, uh, if you come to fields, uh, you see the fields that you are getting from your data, from your data uh, base. You can add new calculated field or new query field, but of course, Query field can be can come from the SQL statement itself, or you can add a calculated field. I'm going to be creating a dedicated video to calculated fields and formulas for Power BI report builder. So let's keep that for now. Some options here if it's case sensitive, accent sensitive, and things like that. Uh, if you want to set up a default collation, that can be useful as well. Especially if you are getting data from different databases with different collations. Uh, filters. So if you want to add a filter here, for example, I want to only get operation number that it's equal to 10. Or um, you can add another one, but let's keep this here for now. Okay. And you can also have parameters. Again, parameters will come uh, as well in a different video. All right. So we have our first uh, data set it's with a filter. Let's create another one using the static table. So let's say standard. Um, I'm gonna then use the static table. Now you can just write your, you know, XML here. I don't find that very easy to do by hand. And for um, uh, enter data to manually enter data, the query design of offers you a very a simple way to do so. So you can type in here, right? So you can keep type. Or you can uh, get the data from an Excel file, uh, copy that data, I'm doing that right now, and you can come here and paste it, right? So similar to that. And what you can do as well, you can, if you double click, you can change the column name. So for example, this is order, uh, this is part, this is optimal, and this is uh, description, for example. And there we go. So you see that it, it translates that into a, a XML uh, statement. And that's that's okay for now. And you see that those fields are all, uh, are all as well uh, uh, populated in here. Right, so to use this, now essentially you can uh, drag and drop the fields, right? So, for example, if I drag and drop this order number, uh, you are adding this field here. But of course, the quickest way will be coming here into insert, insert a new table. Uh, you can insert a new table here, and after you do that, you click where you want to add your table, right? So, I, I, I really like having the things, you know, snapping like this. So let me remove the title. We don't need the title. And let me remove the, the uh, footer as well. Remove footer. There you go. So right now, because I, I haven't select 
to what data source data set actually this is getting data from uh, it's going to allow me to select which data set I'm, I want to get the data from so let get it from the orders here and after I do the first one the second one will always be from the same data set okay another way to do so if you right click here you came to Tadlex properties you can just select the data set from here okay all right so operation number operation name I can add new columns of course we can delete columns as well uh, resource there you go now we have a very simple a very simple uh, report that we can uh, visualize it if you come to home and run wait a little bit and there we go so I have created a very simple uh, paginated report if you want to uh, you can just set, uh, change the sizing you can uh, you know pretty much change visually how your report is being displayed and if you run again you got you're gonna get that updated layout all right that's it for this video thank you